Hundreds of thousands are appealing for mercy in Europe. In Denmark, they record the national origin of criminal convictions. But in this case, it's a disaster for our reputation. Once known for its iconic Little Mermaid and fairy tales by Hans Christian Andersen, Denmark is now grappling with the severe consequences of mass immigration. With immigrants making up nearly 10% of the population, social cohesion is unraveling, and fears of cultural erosion and economic strain are pushing the country to shut its doors. Unlike its Nordic neighbor Sweden, where immigrants constitute about 20% of the population, Denmark has found a radical solution. From zero asylum to sending refugees back to Syria, here's why Denmark has had enough. What has pushed Denmark to the edge? Denmark experienced significant immigration following World War II, inviting guest workers mainly from Turkey, Morocco, and former Yugoslavia to fill labor shortages. Initially seen as a temporary solution, many of these workers settled permanently, adding cultural diversity. Uh, we can uh, we can tell a dance perfect. But also integration challenges. The 1990s marked a turning point. As the impacts of mass immigration became evident, Denmark began to tighten its immigration policies. Anti-immigrant sentiment grew, pushing right-wing parties into power and leading to stricter laws. In the early 2010s, the Syrian refugee crisis brought millions of refugees to Europe, including Denmark. Hundreds of thousands are appealing for mercy in Europe. Initially driven by humanitarian concerns, Denmark soon faced mounting political and public pressure. Issues of integration, national security, and the strain on the social welfare system dominated discussions. Prime Minister Lars Luka Rasmussen's government from 2015 to 2019 initially addressed the crisis with a humanitarian approach. It's true that we have brought our numbers down to the lowest we have seen for the last nine years. However, as the number of asylum seekers grew, the focus shifted to stricter immigration control. Stricter laws were introduced to reduce asylum seekers and tighten criteria for family reunification and permanent residence. What's driving Denmark's tough new immigration policies? Denmark's welfare system provides extensive social benefits like health care, housing, pensions, and subsidies. To fund these benefits, Danish citizens pay very high taxes. For every $100 earned in Denmark, more than $40 is taken as taxes to support these services. This system has been heavily strained by the influx of low-skilled immigrants who often don't want to work, fit in, or speak the language. Many immigrants have chosen to take advantage of the generous welfare benefits instead of entering the labor market. This dependency on handouts has severely overstretched public finances. This generous support system created a pull effect, making it more attractive for immigrants to stay on welfare rather than seek employment. This situation has led to social issues and high crime rates among concentrated immigrant populations in particular neighborhoods. In Denmark, they record the national origin of criminal convictions. In 2021, violent crimes committed by immigrants and their children constituted 29% of total convictions, despite accounting for only 14% of the population. In 2018, native Danes contributed an overwhelming $6 billion more to the state than they used in public services, while immigrants and their descendants had a negative net fiscal impact of $3.5 billion over the same period. This imbalance clearly shows that immigrants, as a group, consumed far more in public services than they contributed through taxes, adding to the urgency for policy changes. Starting in December 2023, the Danish government has significantly cut the benefits for asylum seekers. For example, single asylum seekers see their monthly support almost halved. Couples with children, who currently receive $4,285 per month, have them reduced to $2,473. In contrast, unemployed Danish citizens can receive up to $3,120 per month. How has Denmark's image of harmony collapsed? Denmark has taken towards stringent anti-immigration policies. Figures like Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen, who is associated with left-wing anti-immigration sentiments, have spearheaded this shift. 
Her government's initiatives include relocating asylum seekers to Rwanda during the processing of their applications. 2021, Denmark passed a law which allowed people to be sent outside the EU while their claims were considered. And withdrawing residence permits from Syrians in regions deemed safe, such as Latakia province. Fredriksson's leadership, once praised for her handling of the COVID-19 pandemic, is now under intense scrutiny. While her strong support for Ukraine and effective pandemic management have been commendable, the Ukrainians are suffering and it's a very difficult situation and they are in lack of different types. It's her tough stance on immigration that truly resonates with many in Denmark. However, this hardline approach is stirring controversy within her own party and among European Social Democrats, especially following the recent EU Parliament election. Despite being popular at home, these policies could potentially hinder her chances of securing a top position in Brussels. Denmark has adopted laws to discourage potential migrants from entering its territories. One such law, known as the Law on Jewelry, requires asylum seekers to surrender their valuables to cover their stay. Additionally, family reunification rules have been tightened, with a mandatory three-year waiting period for asylum seekers wishing to bring their families to Denmark. In an effort to prevent the formation of immigrant ghettos or parallel societies, Denmark has implemented radical measures. These include redeveloping public housing neighborhoods with high concentrations of non-Western immigrants by raising and selling public houses. If you have lived in the Western, Western country, then, then you have the full right and if you are lived in the non-Western country, then you don't have the same right. This strategy aims to reduce the number of immigrants in these neighborhoods and promote better assimilation with Danish people. Moreover, a law mandates that all young children in these areas must attend at least 25 hours of preschool education to learn the Danish language and values. Denmark's immigration policy also includes a zero-refugee approach, drastically reducing the number of refugees it accepts, particularly from safe zones. Before the war in Ukraine, Denmark took in fewer refugees per capita than both Sweden and Germany. In 2020, asylum applications in Denmark dropped by a significant 57% to 1,500, the lowest since the 1990s, while Sweden had 13,000 asylum claims in the same year. This stark contrast highlights the impact of Denmark's strictly implemented policies. The immigration rate in Denmark fell by 19% over the previous year, with 98,344 people moving into the country, a decrease from the previous year. Most new arrivals were Ukrainians, with about 8,229 Ukrainian people, representing approximately 8% of the total, down significantly from the 38,381 Ukrainians who arrived the previous year. Denmark needs to ensure that their country remains safe and sustainable for future generations. How can Denmark ensure its own citizens don't feel like outsiders in their own country? One of the key reasons behind Denmark's strict immigration policies is the desire to protect what many Danes see as their country's unique cultural identity and social cohesion. Denmark's extensive welfare state, which provides comprehensive health care, housing, pensions, and subsidies, is believed to be sustainable only by maintaining a certain level of social cohesion and Danishness. Political figures from various parties have echoed this sentiment, arguing that the welfare state can only be maintained by protecting the cultural and social fabric of the nation. This belief led to the introduction of a new temporary protection status in 2015 by the Danish parliament, which could be withdrawn when conditions in home countries improved even slightly. This measure was designed to address concerns about immigrants seeking asylum on dubious claims and economic migrants who were seen as a drain on taxpayer resources. The Danish government argues that their goal is not to have zero asylum seekers. We are also planning to send a clear message. Uh, if you are coming uh, to Europe, uh, stay clear of uh, Denmark. We, we have a lot of integration issues in Denmark. We have a lot of problems and we want to tighten the rules on your possibility to stay here permanently. But to ensure that those who come to Denmark do so through official channels and are selected based on humanitarian criteria. In the past three years, Denmark has been meticulous in vetting refugees, accepting fewer than 250 through the UN resettlement system. Can this model work for other countries? The prompt expulsion of refused asylum applicants has been a cornerstone of Denmark's strategy, setting it apart from other European nations where such individuals often remain for months or even years after their applications have been denied. So you've all gone underground? Yes, sir. 
all disappeared. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, living outside of society. Yes, ma'am. This shift towards stringent policies has not been without controversy. Denmark's decision to deem areas like Latakia safe for return has raised concerns at the UN Refugee Agency and among human rights organizations. Despite these criticisms, Denmark's government continues to pursue its strict immigration policies, setting a precedent that other European nations are beginning to notice and, in some cases, emulate. For example, Germany has faced significant challenges in carrying out deportations due to legal and practical hurdles. This has led to the introduction of tougher laws aimed at more effective returns. European countries must be able to distinguish between those fleeing war and persecution, who genuinely need asylum, and economic migrants. Treating these two groups equally is neither practical nor fair. Denmark's strict stance on immigration is driven by a desire to preserve its welfare state and cultural identity. Is Denmark's tough stance on immigration the only way to protect its future?